Hey guys, Aaron Boster here with the Ohio Health MS Center. And I was thinking about an MS vocab word, uh, cognitive fatigue or cognitive fog, uh, or uh, oftentimes on uh, social media, cog fog. Uh, and so I wanted to kind of explain the complexities of cog fog. And I'm going to do that while I'm drawing. So what I want to show you here is how MS is very, very complex. In cognitive fatigue or cog fog or difficulties with thinking and memory, which could manifest as uh, slowed processing speeds uh, or difficulty with multitasking, executive functioning, um, can occur for a lot of different reasons in MS. And there's a lot of contributors. So, for example, poor sleep is going to make cog fog a problem. And depression will also really worsen cognitive fog. And in fact, depression can cause something called pseudo-dementia, which is uh, difficulty with thinking because the person's depressed. And if you treat it, uh, it makes it better. Uh, similarly, if you treat the sleep, it makes it better. What's another one? Anxiety. Anxiety similarly uh, plagues a lot of MS patients, and it can certainly interfere with your cognitive functioning. What else can do this? We've talked about a lot of things here, but there's a lot more. So what about medication effects? We take medicines for spasticity, for um, neuropathic pain. We take medicines uh, for a multitude of reasons that make us think slowly or make us fatigued or can impair our thinking and memory. So we have to keep that in mind. Uh, but what else? Heat sensitivity. A lot of MS patients uh, struggle in the heat, uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, it has to deal with uh, when you go in the heat, you lower your functional reserve. Uh, and I'll talk about functional reserve here in a little bit, but I think that this is important. Um, what else can affect uh, uh, cognitive function? Well, there's a lot of stuff. Now, brain inflammation. And another way uh, of this clinically would be to call it activity. So brain inflammation or activity uh, is, is a def definition uh, that we apply when someone has a new MS attack clinically or when they have an MRI lesion, a new or enlarged T2 lesion or a contrast enhancing lesion. And that's activity. And both of those things have been studied and related to cognitive fog. If you have unchecked brain inflammation or activity, you're going to have cognitive fog. Likewise, brain atrophy is strongly correlated with cognitive fatigue and cognitive fog and difficulty with thinking and memory. And so that's another uh, a big area. And brain atrophy is an area that we're only now starting to be able to study uh, in real time. Um, it's un until very, very recently something that was really only able to be done in, re in research settings. And uh, it's only now that institutions like ours are starting to be able to look at brain atrophy because uh, of its correlation to disability and also its correlation to cognitive impairment. What about stressors? Stressors, whether they be physical, like a fever um, or uh, a surgery, they can, in my opinion, worsen neurological function. And uh, I see this all the time with my patients. Now. Before I turn the page, I, I want to try to give a good look at this. Um, so, so those are some contributors to this concept of cognitive fog. And why is that? Well, in, in order to explain it to you, I need to talk about um, uh, the functional reserve. So, now the functional reserve is not a new concept, but I think it was reborn recently. Uh, because of uh, Steven Krieger, a friend of mine. I think it's at um, Steven Krieger, MD, uh, although I, I can't fully remember. But Steven Krieger, you know, he talks about uh, the leaky pool model of MS, which I love, and he talks about the functional reserve. And so let me explain to you uh, what that means. So if this is a swimming pool, and that's the wall, and and in the swimming pool, you know, here's the water, all right? The, this, the swimming pool, uh, this is the clinical threshold. 
And so things over here, there are symptoms. Down here, there's no symptoms. This is the... threshold. And this distance here and this distance here is the functional reserve. Sorry, I misspelled that. Now, the, the volume of water is your reserve. As you have MS lesions, they push up into the pool from the bottom, right? And your functional reserve is high enough then you don't have symptoms. But if the functional reserve lowers, then you uncover symptoms. And then in certain circumstances, the functional reserve will rise again. Well, think about the functional reserve. Functional reserve is a real uh, thing. And as you have MS over time, you have less functional reserve. What's up, Ryan? Nice to see you. And when, when you uh, have a lowered functional reserve, you can see neurological uh, deficits that come out. And they don't have to be focal. Think about the, uh, the thing that humans do so well. We think. Uh, our our, our uh, tops of our heads are, are all for thinking and processing. And that, that's a huge computer. It's a giant task to be able to do that. It's very, very taxing. And it uses up a very large functional reserve. So when you think about, all, when you think about cognitive fatigue, poor sleep lowers the functional reserve. Depression, anxiety, they might as well. Heat sensitivity certainly lowers the functional reserve. Stressors lower the functional reserve. Brain inflammation and activity lower the functional reserve. And so if you look here, as the functional reserve lowers, you uncover disease activity. Remember what I showed you. And that is, I think, one of the, turning the camera around, to cognitive fatigue. Now, there are other things like disease progression that we haven't touched on, but I just wanted to share a few thoughts on this MS vocab word. Again, my name is Aaron Boster with Ohio Health MS. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in. Take care. Have a good night.